science fair. I was talking to a friend saying, oh, I know, I can do a video about the science fair and, you know, talk about how much it sucks. And she said, oh, at my school, we didn't do the science fair. What? That got me wondering, did other people not do the science fair? So I did my own science experiment on Twitter. I ran a poll and asked you guys if you even did the science fair and whether or not you enjoyed doing it. And 58% of you said you didn't have to do the science fair. Like, that was way more than I expected. That's the majority. I've renamed this group of people the lucky ones. And when I asked if you enjoyed doing it, 21% of you said you did enjoy it, and 21% of you said you didn't. I know Twitter polls aren't the most accurate sources of data, but I think it's safe to say that this is a pretty split issue. Now, I'm in the 21% of people who didn't enjoy the science fair. And don't get me wrong, I love science. Well, okay, that might not be true. I really hated biology and, and chemistry. That was, that was just a mess. But physics... Physics was okay. Maybe I don't like science. I just like space and watching these. Bill and Neil, they're my buddies. Except Neil did hurt my feelings one time. We'll get back to that later. All right, so let me briefly go over what the science fair is for you lucky ones who didn't have to deal with that. Apparently, it's a very American thing, right guys? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, we started doing them, I want to say around fourth grade, and we would do this every year up until the 10th grade. The whole class would spend all day researching a topic that interests them, and then we would have to come up with a question that we could run an experiment on. An example of these questions are, does the temperature of a battery affect how long it will last? What color light produces the most heat? How does the shape of a rocket's fins affect its travel? All of which are projects I did. Basically, this was supposed to teach you about the scientific method, but what it really did was teach us how to procrastinate and make up data. And on paper, you might think, oh, that sounds like fun. I wish my school did the science fair. No, here are some flaws with the science fair. First, you got the option to work with a partner. And of course you want to work with a partner so you can split up the work and not do as much. Now, since I didn't have any friends, I would partner up with someone that no one else wanted to partner up with, but they wouldn't do any of the work. I only did the science fair with a partner once. From fifth grade on, I did my science fair projects alone. The second problem is that we had to come up with a question all on our own. And you gotta understand, we were just kids. We don't think as cognitively as scientists do, okay? Just a couple years ago, we still believed in Santa Claus, except for me, my family didn't do Santa Claus. And now you want us to wonder if the ratio of a cylinder will affect its buoyancy? Like, come on. And also, we don't have access to any resources. You know, the science fair is a lot like an episode of Mythbusters. But what sets apart the Mythbusters from your average fourth grader is that they're really smart engineers who have access to explosives, while we can't even drive to Walmart ourselves. We have to ask our parents to take us. One year, I wanted to do an experiment on a certain type of soil, so I did research, I wrote everything all up, but then when I went to Home Depot to buy the soil, they didn't even have it! So I had to pick a new topic and start all over again. Now do you see why I think the science fair sucks? So okay, I think it would have been better in elementary school if we were assigned a question. I know the whole point of these things is about discovery, but we're all stupid, okay? I guess if you were anything like me and you chose a crappy question, you'll have a bad science fair. My very first science fair after all day researching possible questions, me and my partner came up with a question, what time of the day is the hottest? Now, I already know the answer to this question, and in fourth grade, I'm sure I already knew the answer to this question, too. It's noon. Like, I don't need to run an experiment on that. In fact, I can just go to Google and seriously just type weather, and boom, there's my data right there. No need for an experiment. But the science fair isn't just finding the answer to your question. No, 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 no. First, after you research the topic, you have to write a hypothesis. A hypothesis is basically you guessing what you think the result of the experiment will be, but you don't write it down as, I think this will happen. No, you write it like you know what's going to happen. A formula... <laughs> formula, science, for a perfect hypothesis is if blank, then blank, because blank. Let's use my battery experiment. I said, does the temperature of a battery affect how long it will last? So after doing research about how batteries work, a hypothesis for this experiment would be if two AA batteries are used at different temperatures, then the battery in the hot temperature will not last as long because the battery's fluid will evaporate, which damages the internal structure of the battery. Oh, and spoiler alert, no, no, it doesn't. I put two batteries outside, two in the freezer, I let them sit, and then I plugged them into my Game Boy Advance, and they lasted the exact same amount of time. I learned nothing. So you also have to write up the materials you use for the experiment, then you have to write up the steps to do the experiment, the procedures, and you also have to write an introduction, basically just bullcrapping what you're going to do. Then you do the experiment, aka the fun part. Make sure you write down your results because you have to make a graph. You have to. How do you make a graph to show that batteries at different temperatures lasted the same amount of time? 
they did. <laughs> you think you're done, right? But no, you gotta write up the results as if your graph didn't already perfectly depict that, and a conclusion. The conclusion is like the most insulting part of the science fair. You basically go through this checklist of questions that you answer. Was your hypothesis correct? No, my hypothesis was not correct. What mistakes could you have made in your experiment? I don't know, maybe I took the batteries out of the cold and hot and put them in a room temperature Game Boy and in a couple of minutes they both went to a room temperature. I don't know. How can others use this information you found? What do you mean? All the batteries lasted the same. I don't think any-